In this video, we're going to take a look at Android Studio, but specifically from the perspective of someone who's never used Android Studio before, but someone who has used App Inventor. So first of all, our agenda, we're going to have both a high level and a technical agenda. I might cover everything in this video, maybe break it into two or three, depending on how long it goes. Uh, nonetheless, first of all, why? Well, I love App Inventor, to be honest with you. Uh, because we have been offering this beginning Android class that is designed for people who haven't programmed before. And I find App Inventor to be very straightforward, especially if you haven't programmed before, and more importantly, very easy to get quick results without being overwhelmed. Uh, but then we have Android Studio, which is what I've traditionally used in the in major courses for people who have programmed before. Android Studio will give us a whole lot of things that we can do, but the trick is if you open it up and you look at this, it's overwhelming at first if you've never programmed before. So, uh, okay, if that's the case, why don't we just stick with App Inventor for eternity? That would be a nice option, but the trick is that App Inventor in being a simpler interface than Android Studio also can't do as much as Android Studio. We get to a point where we can write a very nice application like our uh, learning chemistry example, and we can put it together very quickly. But then we want to do other things. We want to do things like read JSON streams from uh, things like the uh, Chicago Open Data Initiative and also the Cincinnati Open Data Initiative. The real value of, of a mobile app is when you can combine data from separate sources and create information from it. Those sources might be a JSON stream, it might be the GPS on the phone, so you know where the user is, something location-based. It could be a contact list or something like that. Well, I started to look at doing JSON parsing in App Inventor, and, you know, it's going to evolve over time. But really, we get to the point where it starts to become easier to do these more complicated tasks in an IDE that is suited to do more complicated tasks. So trying to shoehorn what App Inventor can do and make it parse JSON would be a lot of work. Uh, doing it in Android Studio, a, a complex task like JSON parsing, not so much work. So we've reached that point now where we've pretty much exhausted what App Inventor can do and it's time to look at a more, uh, a more thorough IDE. Okay, so when I say IDE, what do I mean? An integrated development environment is where we develop our projects. One thing I really like about App Inventor is the installation process. It's browser-based. All you have to do is go to this URL. Okay, with Android Studio, you have to download the Java SDK and Android Studio and oftentimes the Android SDK. I'm not going to go over that in this video for two reasons. Reason number one is I already have a video that goes over that, and that it's in itself is a five to ten minute process. Reason number two is, frankly, uh, the way that we install Android Studio changes over time, and I found that when I have made videos out of it, uh, it, it gets out of date very quickly, and then people tell me my video is out of date. Best thing to do, honestly, is just to go on the web and search for Android Studio Download and follow the instructions. So to start App Inventor, we simply go to the URL, ai2.appinventor.mit.edu. To start Android Studio, it's like a traditional Windows program where you go to Start, and then you choose Android Studio. So it installs on your virtual machine. Uh, at the University of Cincinnati, we have another option which I strongly recommend, and that is we can remote into the lab environment with Android Studio already installed. That's going to save a whole lot of work. Okay, next, the emulator. In App Inventor, one of the things that we'll do is we will start the AI Starter program and then go to connect and then emulator and this will bring up an emulator very quickly which is really handy we don't have a lot of control over the emulator though uh, we don't have things like the android device monitor where we can send in uh, latitude and longitude at, at least that's what i found in my research if anybody watching this video has found something else by all means let me know in the comments section okay android studio a little bit different First of all, I'm going to start a brand new project, so I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to say New, and I'm going to say New Project, and we're just going to make this a, a quick demo project. So application name, we're going to say Android Studio 
demo. Uh, domain. Okay, now this is important because the domain is going to uh, create what's called a package, and that's what uniquely identifies your work on the Google Play Store. Uh, so this has to be unique. You don't want to do just com.example. Here we have edu.uc, which is appropriate. I'm going to add to this my Bearcat ID, which is Jones BR. So this is unique because it's the University of Cincinnati's domain. In addition to that, it's my unique username within the University of Cincinnati. And that gives us the full package name, jonesbr.uc.edu.androidstudio.demo. Yeah, works great for me. So I'm going to go ahead and choose next, and I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. We'll go ahead and go with Android Marshmallow. I'm going to choose next again. Uh, let's go ahead and do a blank activity, and I'll choose next. I, I hate to do this. I usually don't recommend doing this. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default main activity, and I'm going to choose finish. So I have to go through this creating a project so that I can bring up the emulator. So this will take a few moments. We'll go ahead and let this run, uh, and we'll come back to it in just a moment. So the emulator, we're going to start that up. Next, we're going to take a look at the designer, which is where we can put widgets on the screen. Okay, I'll pause the video as this loads. Okay, uh, so the project is loaded. It took uh, about two minutes, two and a half minutes. And I will say that uh, App Inventor loads, does a lot of things a lot quicker than Android Studio because, again, App Inventor is a lot simpler. Okay, now I want to run this in an emulator. We see that I have my app here, and I'm going to choose the debug. That's a major additional uh, feature that we get in Android Studio that I have not found in App Inventor. And again, if you know something I don't know, by all means comment on the video, let me know. But one of the big advantages of Android Studio is that we can debug through our program, or in other words, our piece. watch it work step by step. So I click the little bug to open it in, in, uh, in a uh, debug or an emulator. You see at the bottom, Gradle build running. So it's not going to open the emulator until that stop, until that's finished. Once again, things are going to take a little bit longer in Android Studio than they will in App Inventor. So I'll go ahead and pause and let this load. Now it's finished and it's given me a device chooser. Now, what do we click here? Well, when you're starting out with Android Studio, you might not have anything to click. So what you want to do is you need to create an Android virtual device. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis here, and it's going to bring up the Android virtual device manager. You see, I have set several up already. Uh, again, a nice thing about this is you have a bit more control. You can choose the resolution. You can choose the API level. You can choose the CPU type, uh, size on disk a lot of things that you can control here where uh, App Inventor gives you kind of a default emulator. And I do like App Inventor's emulator because it's very responsive, comes up very quickly. But in Android Studio, you can tailor one. So if I were brand new here, I would click on that lower left button, create new device, and then I can choose phone, tablet, wear, or TV. I'll go ahead and I'll choose phone, and uh, we'll stick with Nexus 5, and I'm gonna choose next. And then it's going to give me a few configuration parameters. Okay, and next. Okay, whoops, I think I went too far there. Uh, okay, what is the image that I want to put onto my emulator? Um, five, uh, honestly, 5 was very short-lived. I'm going to choose an Android 6.0. Now, an important note, take a look at the target here. You probably are going to want something with Google APIs, especially if you're using things like uh, Geofences or AdWords or Google Maps. Those are in an additional library, which are the Google APIs. So more than likely, you're going to want to choose one of these. Now, take a look at the ABI here. You see x86 and x86-64. Those are a lot faster if you install Intel's Haxm, H-A-X-M. Once again, that's a five minute video of its own and I have made a video of that. Just search my channel for Intel Haxam. If you use the a ARM, it's gonna be a lot slower uh, because it, it doesn't have some optimizations for running as a true virtual machine, which the Intel Haxam has. So you'll even see a little warning here, uh, consider an x86 system image for better emulator performance. So, if you find the emulator running very slowly, take a look at that Haxam video. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose next, and more things I can choose here. Okay, how are we going to start up? 
we'll go ahead and use host GPU. Um, I'm going to choose show advanced settings as well because there's some things here that I generally want to have. Camera. Front and back camera, we can choose emulated or a webcam. Emulated gives you that little checkerboard design with a moving box if you've used an emulator before. Webcam will show your true webcam. Uh, honestly, I've had some issues with webcam. It doesn't always work for me. I haven't found the perfect way to fix it, but I will say if you're using the Intel Hexam, uh, that's the only time I've gotten the camera emulator to work. I'm sorry, the, cam the webcam to work. In other words, you load the emulator, and if your computer has a webcam, it uses that webcam as the phone's camera, which is a lot better for uh, you, you know, simulating what's really going to happen in real life. This is especially true if you're going to do barcode scanning or anything else like that, where you need to toggle the camera to show something. So RAM, VM heap, internal storage, SD card, these are all good things to manage. You see, it's asking for a good amount of RAM here, about a gig and a half. Uh, a couple years ago, it started off at like 512, but definitely we want to have a lot of RAM. You might want to tweak those. If you're doing a lot of multimedia, maybe increase the SD card. A warning is these things are going to have an effect on the amount of your hard disk space that's consumed by the simulator. So you don't want to spin up maybe 10 different emulators that each have one gigabyte of internal storage and one gigabyte of SD card because that's going to start reserving space on your hard drive that you can't use for other things. Normally at this point I would choose finish but for that very reason that I'm limited on hard disk space I'm going to cancel this and we will use an emulator I've already created. Uh, this one's fine x86-64 you see that's the CPU it's API level 23, so fairly recent, and a very large resolution. If anything, I might bump down that resolution. Let's say that I do want to bump down the resolution, or I do want to make changes. I simply am going to click on the pencil here, and I can go back to this wizard that we had before, and I can change uh, many of these things, like the device that I'm running. Uh, okay, what's it scaling? What's the webcam? So on and so forth. So those things are changeable once you've created them. I'm going to close this and I am going to go ahead and emulate my program. I'll tell you what, because I have a video running, I'm going to do it in my Nexus 23 here and choose OK. Now it is going to take a few minutes for this emulator to load. And again, the App Inventor emulator I find to be a little bit faster. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pause the video. There's our Hacksum. Love that guy. I'll go ahead and pause the video as this loads up. It's going to start up just as you were starting your own phone with the same welcome screen, so on and so forth. Okay, it took about five minutes to load, and this is what came up, just a simple hello world. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I found I had an incompatibility with my uh, Target SDK version I had to change, but nonetheless, all set. Now we see we have it in the emulator, a very simple application. Okay. Next thing on our high-level agenda after the emulator is the designer view. So the App Inventor has a really nice drag-and-drop designer, like it quite a bit, where we can put widgets on the screen. And honestly, looking at the chemistry example, one thing I really like about App Inventor is the way it does image sprites. That would take a little more work to do in Android Studio. I'm going to go with my traditional application of the Plant Places application. But how do we adjust the user interface? Well, I'm going to go to Android Studio, and uh, you see this thing called Activity Main? That's our designer. Now, this is frankly a, a somewhat common issue to go to the designer, and there's some kind of rendering problem, even on a brand new project. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm looking one second. That, yeah, that's a different project. Um, here's my project. If I want to go to the designer view, Let's say I'm starting from nothing. I'm going to expand on app. I'm going to expand resources. I'm going to expand layout. And then we see this activity main. I double click that and that's going to bring up essentially what is the same thing as this designer view. Uh, when I say designer view, I mean click on, on the designer button in App Inventor. So it's going to bring this up. Now it says, okay, uh, I'm going to double click so I can look at this in high definition. And we see, okay, uh, one or more layouts are missing layout widths. Okay, we have a couple options here. 
one thing that frequently will fix issues with the layout is if we click on this button here and we change something here, we can change our theme. A lot of times that's an issue, that, that will fix the issue. Let me click automatically add all missing attributes and see if that will fix it first. Simple is always better. Now, to be honest with you, this is where I really like videos because I continued down the path I was going for quite a while, struggled with the layout and decided that's not appropriate for an intro video like the one that we're doing. So I decided to switch my activity. I went to new and I went to activity and instead of blank activity, I chose empty activity. Uh, why? Okay, well, one thing we have to consider with Android is that it is still growing. It's not mature. It is a, a platform where if you write something today, in two years, one year, maybe even six months, the underlying technology might have changed. You might have to update your, your application. In this case, when I chose blank activity, it tried to put some things like a floating toolbar on, which are great things, but they're in different versions of Android and so different renderers have different way to render them and it can be a bit of a headache to try to get it all to work together. So instead of blank activity I went to empty activity which gave me a, a simpler look and feel. Still having some rendering problems but uh, I, it's going to be easier to show this than to show the other view I was looking at. So we want to see what the equivalent is of this designer view where we can just drag from the left and put onto the canvas on the right. And that's what we have here. You see we have all of the widgets on the left and we have our drawing canvas on the right. So I'm going to grab a button and I'm going to drag it and you see as I drag it it says okay where do you want to put it? Keep in mind in Android it's especially important to have a liquid layout because with Android different manufacturers make the devices they're going to be different resolutions. That's good because different manufacturers compete and come up with new innovations. On the other hand, let's look at our friends over in iOS. There's only one manufacturer and it's Apple and it's a consistent look and feel. Uh, so it's a bit easier to program for that. So it's a bit easier to program with only, you know, a very select number of iPhone models that are in the world. Uh, with Android, we have to consider that there are a lot of different models, so it's a bit more difficult to program for, but on the other hand, we get the innovation of multiple manufacturers. So nonetheless, I'm going to drop this button right under Hello World, and there's our button, and we get some properties over here that we can edit. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch this in the emulator so we can take a look at how it looks. Now you see that the app has loaded in the emulator. We have our button. Doesn't do anything yet, but we do have our button here on the emulator. So at this point, the video is getting a bit too long to be comfortable. I like to cut off videos around the 10 minute mark. So what we're going to do is wrap up our high level overview here. We talked about why App Inventor versus Android Studio, what an IDE is, allows us to write our program, compile our program, debug our program, and run our program how to install it, and how to start it. We looked at the emulator, and we just took a look at the designer view, how we can go in and we can drag and drop widgets from the palette onto the designer. So that's going to set us up well for our next video, which is an agenda, uh, sorry, which is a technical video. And in this, we're going to take a look at the blocks view of App Inventor. So when we go over here and we click on blocks, we're going to consider the equivalent between the blocks that we see on this view and how we would implement that in code in Android Studio. I look forward to seeing you in that next video. Thank you.